Hey everybody, welcome to Principles of Horticulture Lab 8. So this lab will be over bulbs and corms. And before you begin the lab, really the first thing that you need to do is go to Blackboard, Principles of Horticulture, and find the labs folder, which will be up near the top. Open that folder up and uh, print and download lab number eight and have that lab handy as you begin. Thank you. All right, so these are the three specialized plant parts that we're gonna be looking at today. Right here we have an onion bulb. Um, this is a lily bulb, and this is a gladiolus corm. All right, the first thing we need to do is take the onion bulb and slice it longitudinally that is to say, we're gonna slice it kind of in an up and down direction. We're just gonna cut it in half. All right, so I've sliced the onion bulb in half longitudinally or lengthwise. So what you need to do is take a look at this image that you see, and you need to uh, sketch this image onto page one of your lab, and you need to identify the tunic the basal plate, the scales, and the apical bud. And if you have to refer back to the video that you watched earlier on specialized plant parts, that's fine. Go ahead and do that. On page two of your lab, there's some questions that you need to answer. The first question is, what kind of bulb, tunicate, or scaly is an onion? So you can um, think about that. Think back on the drawing you just made and determine whether you think an onion is an example of a tunicate or a scaly bulb. Um, next, you need to answer the question as to what scales are. Scales are modified blank, so fill in the blank. Third, the basal plate is a modified what? Fill in the blank. Next, the apical bud contains a what? So fill in the blank there and then roots develop from the what? So look at the bulb image that you saw earlier, and you should be able to easily determine where the roots are developing from. Um, another name for the papery outer covering is the blank, and starch is a carbohydrate consisting of a large number of blank molecule joined together by chemical bonds. So fill in all the blanks and complete that part of page two. So I took some iodine and I tried the starch test on the onion and I didn't get a very good result. Um, so that could mean one of two things. It could mean that the carbohydrates that are stored in the scales of the onion are not starches, they're something else, some other carbohydrate. Or it could mean that I'm just using the wrong iodine solution. I also took some of the onion scales and I kind of chopped them up real fine to see if I could, you know, get some of those carbohydrates out of the scales a little bit better. And I put a drop of iodine on those as well and still not a very strong reaction. Okay, so we tried the starch test on onion and didn't get very good results. Um, so on page two, you're supposed to use the internet to define the term vernalization. So look that up and write down what you found. And then finally at the bottom of page two, it says, when are daffodil bulbs planted outside? Uh, when should they flower? So that's gonna take a little internet research on your part to answer that question. All right, so after you've completed those questions, we're ready to move on to um, the next specialized plant part. So we'll take a look at lily bulbs. All right, everybody. So I've taken the lily bulb and the onion bulb, and I've cut them cross sectionally, and I've laid them next to one another. So you see the lily bulb, which is genus Lilium, over on the left and the onion bulb on the right. So take a couple minutes to look at these pictures and sketch what you see on page three of your lab. 
And then when you're done doing that, there's some questions at the bottom of page three that you need to answer. One question is uh, whether Lilium is a tunicate or a scaly bulb. And then the next question, which of the two bulb bulbs looks like a series of concentric rings, one inside the other, when cut cross-sectionally? And the last question on page three, does the lily bulb have a tunic? So go ahead and finish off page three. All right, one other thing I wanted to show you guys uh, was what a starch reaction looks like. So I have a little uh, pipette here that's got some iodine in it, and I can just drop this on the scales of the lily bulb. And we'll kind of watch and see what happens. So I think you can see that um, it's becoming very dark, um, kind of turning almost like a real brownish black or even black in color. And then over on the right, you see a couple little of splotches of purple kind of over on this side right here. All right, so this is a positive starch test. All right, look and see how dark that's getting now. So that means that we definitely have um, starches being stored in these scales of this lilium bulb. All right, finally, we're looking at uh, gladiolus corms. So the corm on the left is, uh, is a whole corm. And then the corm on you on the right is actually a corm that I cut in half longitudinally. That means up and down. And you're supposed to sketch what you see on page four of your lab, um, just to kind of get you oriented here so we know what we're talking about. So right down, let's see if I can find it here. Right there, that little structure that you see right there is called the basal node. And that is analogous to the basal plate in a bulb. So hopefully that'll get you oriented. So I'll zoom in a little bit closer and um, you can kind of stop the video at this point and go ahead and sketch this. So as far as the starch test goes, I put uh, one drop of iodine on the surface of that cut corm. And you can see we have a positive test for starches. All right, so there are some questions at the bottom of page four that you need to answer. And then after you're done with this lab, take it and put it with the rest of your labs in your lab folder. And I will announce a day and time uh, later in the semester will, when I will arrange to pick those lab notebooks up. All right, so thank you very much for doing lab number eight.